Now then folks, just thought I'd do another little introductory video this time. More talking, less playing, certainly no singing you'll be pleased to hear. Um, I get asked all the time about guitars obviously, because I make them. And people want to know what's best for them before they buy one and everything else. And I find that I'm asked the same questions time and time again. Not that I mind, but this might just help uh, you decide what you want before you sort of get to buying one. And if, whether you buy one of me or not, you know, if you buy one somewhere else, I'd hate you to buy the wrong one and not sort of get anything out of cigar box guitars. So let's have a look at them. We are talking cigar box guitars. Um, bottom line is they are guitars made out of cigar boxes obviously um, but that now encompasses other things you know you make them out of sweetie tins and custom made boxes and anything you can really wine boxes um, but they're still called cigar box guitars um, at the end of the day it's a box and a neck that's basically what we're looking at but there's a huge difference you know on how you can make them and how they can sound and everything else um, mostly when people contact me the first thing they say is I've seen this video on YouTube and I want to sound just the same that's a bit in depth, we're going to come back to that. Um, we'll start with the second question which is how many strings do I need? Well, cigar box guitars can have any number of strings. Um, one string, which is a diddly bow, two strings, we call them chuggers, uh, three strings, four strings, six strings, whatever you like really. Um, what's best for you depends on what you want to do, but to give you an idea, out of say every hundred guitars I build, maybe 99 are three strings and maybe the other one is a four string. Um, three strings are much more popular um, if you want to sound like C6 Steve he plays three strings um, it's much more accessible I think when you get to four strings you get into banjo tunings and all sorts of other things or you can do rather um, and obviously it's another string to sort of find notes on and everything else so you can do without that uh, three strings are very easy because when you open tune them the top and the bottom are the same just an octave apart in this case they're both a G so whatever you play on one, you can play on the other. And the middle one is a, a fourth, which is um, a, a G. Uh, no, I've got that wrong. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, anywhere I play, if I play all three together, that's in tune, that's a D chord. If I play there, bar everything, G, A, B. Um, so it's really easy because everything's always in tune in essence. It's easy to get a simple blues riff going. You know, everything is just where you expect it to be. So from that point of view, I would always say three strings are a good start point. Um, a bit cold in here, my guitar's not very in tune. Um, the next thing, um, frets a lot of people say I don't need frets do I or I only want to play slide well you still need frets I'm afraid yes you can play slide but um, let me give you an example I'm going to play a little bit of slide my fingers aren't very good but <laughs> um, basically you'll see there that we're playing slide but it's only infilling you know when you're playing slide you don't play everything with a slide um, it's just filling bits and the rest is all fingered runs and what have you um, so the, the bottom line is yes you can play without frets but you'll find it very restrictive very quickly particularly if you already play guitar um, you know you'll, you'll run out of things that you can do really you'll want to do more and you can't so from that point of view, do you need frets? I would always say yes you do. Uh, very useful if you want to get anything out of it. Um, let's have a look at the guitar then. This is just how I make them. I've made hundreds of these now and this is what I find works best. You know, lots of trial and error. Um, hardwood neck, essential. You've got to have a hardwood neck. Softwood will bend and you can't play a guitar with a softwood neck. So you want a hardwood neck. Um, top end I always use sealed tuners. Um, as long as a good quality, you don't mind. Well, no matter whether they're sealed or not really but quality is where it's at I always use a proper bone nut uh, rosewood fretboard a very hard fretboard is always good 
gives a bit of strength to the neck and a bit sharper note even without frets you can get a bit of a note on a, on a solid fretboard. Well there are pearl dot inlays as you can see. Um, now on mine the neck runs all the way through what we call a through neck to the end of the guitar uh, so that you get a good anchorage on the bridge and also uh, a bit extra sustain. Um, you know that, that strength if you just bolt it into there you can do that you know resonators if I put a cone in they only go to there but you've got to really brace them well. Um, which gets us down to this, the sound box. Now, you can use anything you want really, but this, the box has a massive effect on the acoustic tone. I mean, I can unplug this. You can probably hear that, I can hear that very well, which is perfect for practice. What we're doing now, if you're playing, the strings are vibrating through the bridge and they're vibrating this top part of the box. This is called the soundboard. Now with an acoustic guitar that soundboard is very thin and massive. So you get lots of vibration, lots of sound. You also have a big deep box for it to rattle around in and it projects out the hole. So you get lots more noise. Uh, cigar boxes being a lot smaller and of different construction are not as loud. You cannot make them as loud. That's why we have pickups or resonator cones in that case. Um, I mean there's things you can do that sort of the bigger the box you use in theory the more noise you're going to get if the top's a bit thick it won't vibrate as much depending on what it's made of it might not vibrate as much you can add sound holes there's lots you can do um, but most people want to plug anyway they want a dirty bluesy sound and they want to plug in so I must admit I don't worry myself too much with the acoustic properties because you can hear yourself and you're not going to be performing acoustically so as long as you can hear yourself for practicing without annoying the dog or the missus or the neighbour um, it's all good I would say. Uh, let's carry on. Pickups. Um, I use three different types of pickups. I use these which are P bass or out of precision basses. Um, new of course but that's what they're designed for. They're basically a, a relatively high output single coil. Nice tone. I should point out at this point I've got flat wound strings on here. So this will sound different to all the others. Flat wounds are basically a jazz string, they're very mellow, a bit bassier, you lose a bit of top end and attack, but they're really good for slide because they're perfectly smooth. So when you slide up there, you only get the note, you don't get any rattles of the, the slide on the on the string or anything. We'll come back to that though. So, P bass pickup, perfectly adequate for what we're doing. Um, I like them a lot, I use them in maybe 70-80% of my builds. Just for comparison, I'll give you this one, which is same pickup, same wiring. This has got nickel wound electric strings on, you can hear that. That's the ribs on the string, you do sometimes pick that up. You can hear the sort of an undertone there, and that's uh, that's just, that's that's the uh, coils on the on the string. Nothing wrong with it. Just I like it mellow. So that's basically the same wire in different strings. So you can see there's a massive difference in tone there already. Another option is the mini humbucker. Now these are exactly what they say, they're, they're humbuckers but they shrunk down so they fit well on a cigar box and I put a switch on these, basically there's two pickup coils in there and the switch turns one of them off so you can have both of them and get the humbucker effect or you can have one. So with them both off, they don't make a lot of difference to the tone that you can actually hear but uh, there's obviously a volume difference which is very handy for, so if you're playing with a band, you've got vocals, you want to play quietly, flick the switch for a solo or for whatever. That second one should sound warmer, fuller, a bit heavier and certainly louder. So, good option, you know, don't cost much more. Um, I think I charge another 15 quid or 20 quid or something for putting them in. So, I like them, I must admit, I use them quite a lot and they come in some cool funky designs as well. 
Another option are these which are handmade by a lad called Juju in Sheffield, hand round pre pole guitar uh, pickups. <laughs> They do sound lovely and they're cool, I mean look at them, they are cool, they look perfectly at home on a cigar box guitar. Um, incidentally this is a, is a cigar box guitar, the box is hollow, it's just a box just with some wood around to make it different I suppose. Um, so that's the three sort of pickups I can use, a lot of people will use piezo pickups, um, I'll be honest I can't stand them, I won't put them in a guitar. A piezo is basically a disc with some piezo magnetic crystals on and they both transmit and um, project sound if you like so you can use them as a buzzer you can put sound into them and they'll buzz or make a noise um, and you can use them as a pickup as well they are cheap they're easy to install but whereas a magnetic pickup picks up the strings moving a piezo if you're not careful will pick up everything it'll pick up your belt knocking on the back of the guitar your hand on the back of the neck you can combat that by enclosing them in wood and adding preamps and everything else but really for the extra work and cost which is next to nothing go mag pop every time um, you can then treat this like a normal guitar you can plug it into your Marshall stack and turn everything up to a million um, you know everything's cool you can use effects you can use a PA piezos you've got to be a little bit careful because they do feedback you know one of the problems is they feedback like crazy when you turn them up um, so basically what I'm saying is frets, mag pop, you're well on your way um, incidentally uh, with piezos you can't really put a tone pot on whereas a mag pop you can have tone volume any wiring you can, you can imagine like you can on a normal guitar I always use brand new electrical parts alpha pots with Sprago in shop capacitors uh, American switchcraft jack sockets um, you know new pickups I use these cool aluminium ashtray bridges which you can only get on one of my guitars exclusive to Randy Roosters um, incidentally that's another thing I like incidentally I've said that twice now <laughs> um, adjustable bridges I, again I feel they are essential on a fretted guitar um, you can use a floating bridge which is basically just a you know a piece across them all so that the string is bridged at the same point on all strings you've got to be careful there with your string gauges because um, if if it's slightly out, you know, if, if your strings aren't quite to tension, for example on here I use a 22, 32, 48 tuned GDG, they're about in tension, but you can see my bridge is staggered, that's because the intonation, I need to be in tune all the way up the fretboard, you know. Shall we turn that up a bit? I've turned everything down somehow. You can hear that's in tune all the way up, um, and it's got to be, otherwise you haven't really got a serious instrument have you? Um, floating bridges are fine for, for slide by the way because you're not depressing the strings at all and it stays, you know, where you put the slide is what matters. Um, but I like to be able to adjust the intonation, I like to be able to adjust the action. You know, when you're not playing slide you can maybe drop the action down, it just gives that a bit more freedom and makes it a bit more usable to my mind. Um, not essential but nice to have and everything else you know bits of wood on the side decoration and everything is just to make it a bit nicer to play or a bit nicer to look at and that's all there is to it so that's your basic guitar um, let's go back let's go back to um, the first question which is I've heard this guitar and I want the sound just the same a lot of people are talking about that slide noise you know they, they're on about that sliding note and all you get you know play with the slide and that gives that sliding noise, it's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, one thing I will say is I like glass slides are a bit less harsh than metal slides, that's just a bottle neck cut down. Um, you can use brass, you can use metal, you can use bone, you can use anything you want, but I like glass. It's just a bit mellower. 
Um, the other thing people want is that dirty blue sound and what we're looking at there. You've got a mag pup, you've got your touring ball pots, you've got an amp, just dial in a bit of what you want. <laughs> You know, just dial it in, that's the beauty of a mag pump, you can treat it like a guitar. that people like a lot of the moment I've had a few requests is a bit more sort of like this you know it's just uh, all I've got there is a bit of bit of reverb well a lot of reverb and a bit of distortion Whatever you like, I mean the key point is you've got your mag pup, you've got your amp, you can play around with it and do pretty much anything you like. Um, so that's really all I've got to say about that. I'll just mention my amp, it's a Roland Cube 30X, not expensive, 80 quid second hand, something like that. Loads of effects built, well half a dozen effects built in. A lovely clean channel, everything you'll need and uh, loud enough to practice it all by all means. If you want to know anything else, if I haven't covered anything there, by all means get in touch with me, let me know. Um, obviously then we could go into solid body guitars, more strings, double necks, all sorts of stuff, but this is just meant to be basic. Um, so that's it, before I get noodling away, um, check out my website www.randyroosterscigarboxguitars.com um, drop me a line, give me a bell, let's have a chat. If you want a guitar, uh, there's plenty in my shop, or I'll make you one. And, uh, you know, end of the day, all I really want to say is get one of these. Um, it will, whether you play guitar, whether you don't play guitar, whatever you do, it'll change your life. I mean, I don't play six string anymore because I get so much more happiness out of a cigar box guitar. And let's look at it this way. You can pay thousands of pounds for a six string guitar, and for the rest of your life, all your mates will just keep telling you, that you're not as good as they are. Buy one of these, you know, something like this is £195 for me, it's all handmade by me in this country. Um, uh, top end of one that I do is like 300 quid. it's not a vast amount of money for a handmade instrument and I guarantee a smile, you know, all I got on six strings was um, lots of practice and then uh, a fair bit of disappointment. <laughs> so uh, go cigar box guitar, it'll make you smile, that's my guarantee. Uh, okay, thanks for watching, and we'll speak to you soon. Cheers now. Ta-da.